Welcome to the Mobile Money Nation. My name is AJ and today I'm going to talk about stock splits. In the news recently, Apple announced that they're going to do a four to one stock split. Their stock price is currently over $400, is actually close to $440. And so today, since this is in the news and it's being talked about a lot, I want to talk about for a beginner investor, what exactly a stock split is. So what happens with a stock split is that the price of an individual share of stock in order to buy it, that price is divided by whatever the stock split number is. And then the number of shares that you own is multiplied by the number of the stock split. So in the case of Apple, they're doing a four to one stock split. Their stock price is over $400. It's close to $440. And so once their split actually goes through on August 31st, their stock price will be divided by four. And then the number of shares that you own in the company will be multiplied by four. So just to break that down, let's assume Apple stock price is exactly $440 today. And so once the stock splits, if it were still at $440, you would divide 440 divided by four. That would now turn the stock price into $110 per share. And if you only own one share, you would now own four shares. And so instead of owning one share of Apple stock at $440, you now own four shares of Apple stock at $110. So obviously, if you notice the math itself, it's the same. You have either $440 worth of stock and it's only one share, or you have $440 worth of stock and it's four shares at $110 per share. So the total value of the stock that you own, that does not change when a company decides to split their stock. And also the total value of the individual company itself, it does not change, only the perceived value based on the price per share. And so when a stock does split, like what does this really mean? Is this a good thing? Is this a bad thing? It really doesn't mean anything when you think about the actual value of the company. But psychologically, this could be a sign for some to buy stock or it may just make it easier for people to buy one share or multiple shares of stock. And of course, the people that this is more attractive to are retail investors, you know, people like you and I who are maybe able to buy a couple hundred dollars worth of stock or maybe a couple thousand dollars worth of stock. And so the higher the stock price of an individual company is, the more money you have to save up in order to just buy one share. And so in the case of Apple, it's a lot easier for you to save $110 than it is for you to save $440 in order to buy one whole share of Apple. And one of the things that I've spoken to people about, especially people that are getting started with investing, is that one of the deterrences in buying a particular company may be because they just see it as too expensive. And so if you have a stock that's $440 or maybe a thousand or even $3,000 per share, and even if you really want to buy this company, you see that it's $1,000 per share, you see that it's $3,000 per share, and that may prevent you from actually investing into that company. However, if you see a stock that's $5 or $10 or even up to $100, that's a lot easier for you to buy. You can buy multiple shares, you can buy 10 shares or maybe even 100 shares if it's a company that's only a dollar or $10, depending on how much money you have to invest. That's a lot easier to stomach for someone that doesn't have a lot of money to invest. And so if a company's stock price is a dollar and you had $1,000 to invest, that means you can buy 1,000 shares of that company. But if their stock price was $10, then you can only buy 100 shares. Now at the end of the day, you're still spending $1,000 worth of your money in order to purchase that stock. But psychologically, for some people, they see that as a huge difference because, oh, wow, I have 100 shares of this one company, but I only have 10 shares of this other company, and I really want to own 100 shares. And even though that number itself, the number of shares, doesn't really matter, it's really the total value and the money that you're actually putting in the company. That's what matters, and that's what is really important. Psychologically, people can see this as something that's really different. And so for you, if you had $1,000, would you rather buy a company that's $100 per share or would you rather buy a company that's $1,000 per share and you can only own one share of that company? And so I pause for you to actually think about which one would you rather buy? Now, you don't know anything about these companies. All you see is the price of their stock. You don't know anything about whether they're profitable, whether they're not profitable. You're only basing it based on the price of the stock. And so as you think about that, remember that that is really irrelevant. When you're deciding to purchase a stock, it should be based on, is this company profitable? 
do they have plans to where they're going to be profitable in the future if they're not currently? And what do you see as the long term value of that individual company or of multiple companies if you're buying an ETF? And so in the comment section below, just mention which one you decided. Did you decide to buy the 10 shares or did you decide to buy the one share of stock or did it not really matter to you because you need more information? Now, when you comment, just put the first thing that came to your mind. Don't take too much time to think about it. Just write down whatever came to your mind. And so if you chose the company that was $1,000 per share and you just bought one share, you're absolutely right. However, if you chose to buy the company that's $100 per share and you bought 10 shares, you're right as well. And that's because there is no right or wrong answer. You need a lot more information to decide what stock you're going to buy, not just the cost per share based on the stock split or how many shares are actually available to purchase of that individual company. And so in the case of Apple, this actually isn't the first time that they've ever done a stock split. Their last stock split was in 2014, where they actually did a seven to one stock split. And at the time that they decided to do that split, their stock price was around $700 per share. And so after the stock split, that dropped their price down to about $100 per share, which made this company a lot more attractive. And even for me, as someone who had been investing for maybe about four or five years at that point, when they made that announcement, it perked up my ears and I'm like, oh wow, I would really like to buy some Apple stock now. And now they've made it easier for me to buy an individual share or to buy multiple shares because if I have $1,000, now I can buy about 10 shares instead of before, I can only buy one share of Apple with my $1,000. And so in Apple's history, once you count this four to one split, they've actually split their stock five times. So they have the four to one split that's coming up. They had the most recent seven to one split in 2014. And then there were three times in the past that they split two to one. And so once you multiply all of this together, that means they've had overall a 56 to one split. And so if you actually multiply the current stock price by 56, which includes all of the splits that they've done in the past, that would then make Apple stock price over $24,000 per share. And so if Apple had never done a stock split in the past, that means their stock would be almost $25,000 per share. Now think about how many just regular retail investors, people that are just investing their savings, how many people would actually be able to afford one share of Apple if they had to spend $25,000 just to buy one share? It is much, much easier to save $400 or even $100 after they have their four to one split than it would have been to save $25,000 just to buy one share. And so let's say you only had $1,000 in order to purchase any Apple stock, you would have to wait until you save another $24,000. And who knows what the price will be by the time you're actually able to save all of that money. However, if you already had $1,000, you can buy multiple shares of Apple when it's at $440 and you can buy about 10 shares or close to 10 shares with that thousand dollars after the stock split at the end of August. And at the moment, Apple is the most valuable company in the world. It's actually valued at over $1.7 trillion at the point of recording of this video. It may be two trillion by the time you actually see it. And they're followed closely behind by Amazon, Google, Microsoft. These are all companies that have already reached that $1 trillion market cap as an individual company. And so while the price of an individual share of these four companies is vastly different, Amazon is over $3,000 per share. Apple is $400 per share. Google is over $1,000 per share. And Microsoft is just over $200 per share. And so although each of these companies are $1 trillion companies, when you look at the total value, the price of buying an individual share of stock is vastly different. And so after Apple actually has their split, they're actually gonna be the easiest company to buy a share out of the four companies I just mentioned, although they are the company that has the actual most value in their company. And so when a company does a stock split, the total value of the company does not change. The total dollar value based on the number of shares that you own, that does not change. The only thing that changes is the stock price. So when you look up the company, you'll see that the price per share changes and then the number of shares that you personally own and that are publicly available to purchase, that number has increased by the stock split number. And so researchers have noticed that there is a trend that in the two to three year period after a company announces a stock split, that they typically outperform the market during that two to three year period. 
And so while there is no actual value in announcing a stock split, because any company can do it at any time, and you can actually do a reverse stock split, which makes the price per share increase and the number of shares decrease, that is also usually a sign that a company is not doing very well because their stock price has gone down. And in order to stay on certain stock exchanges, the price per share of your stock has to stay over a certain number in order to stay on that exchange. And so if your company's price per share is going down, down significantly, a company may decide to do a reverse split in order to increase the value per share. And so while doing just a regular split where you're decreasing the price per share and increasing the number of shares, that can make it more attractive for people like you and I who are buying small number of shares. You know, we're not big investors, we're not investment companies that can buy millions or maybe even billions of dollars worth of shares. This makes it a lot easier psychologically and just affordability wise for the average person. But at the end of the day, it really doesn't matter that much. And especially in 2020, one of the reasons why it doesn't matter as much in 2020 is that back in the day, back in the old days of 2019 or 2010 or 1999, if you wanted to buy one share of stock, there was a fee associated with purchasing a stock. And the more shares you bought, there are potential for you to actually pay less in fees when you look at it per share or even just at a discount. There are some brokers if you bought over 100 shares or maybe over a thousand shares of one individual company, they may have given you a discount on the fees that you spent. Also, if you're only buying one share at a time, for instance, if you're buying a hundred dollar per share stock and you only wanted to buy one share, there may have been a ten dollar fee to buy that one share. But if you were to buy 10 shares of that same stock all at once, you would still only have that one $10 fee. And so in the long run, if you bought more shares at one time, you could save on the amount of fees that you would spend when you purchase a share of stock. But now in 2020, almost every brokerage that's available, especially the ones and which is almost everyone at this point that allow for online trading or, or to buy via an app on your smartphone, they're essentially all free now. So you can buy one share, you can buy 10 shares, and there's no cost to you every time that you buy or sell an individual share of stock. But not only that, not only is there no cost for you to buy, there are also fractional share platforms that allow you to buy just a piece of a company. And so if you wanted to buy Amazon, which is over $3,000 per share, you only need a dollar or five or 10 or even $25 just to buy a piece of Amazon. And so if the value of Amazon goes up by 10%, no matter if you own one share or if you own half a share, however much money you have in Amazon stock, that is also gonna go up by 10%. And so in today's environment in 2020 and beyond, the price per share doesn't really matter as far as being a barrier to entry. If you have at least a dollar or maybe $25, depending on the platform that you use, there are companies like M1 Finance where all you need is $25 and you can buy shares of multiple companies or you can use other companies like Robinhood or Schwab or Public Investing or SoFi Invest. There are so many companies that you can use now to buy just a piece of a company and you don't have to buy a full share of an individual stock. And so for fractional share trading, my favorite app to use is M1 Finance. With M1 Finance, all you need is at least $25 and you can buy Apple, Google, Amazon, Microsoft, and Tesla all at the same time with just $25. And so you could own literally just $5 worth of all of these companies. And so I'll have a link, a referral link to M1 Finance if you'd like to try out M1 Finance. That will be provided below in the description. And I also have reviews of all of the companies that I just mentioned, M1 Finance, Robinhood, Public Investing. If you check out my other videos. I have reviews of these companies and I also have a video talking about fractional share trading, a whole video just talking about what that is and how you can get started with fractional share trading. So be sure to check those out and check out the links below in the description. So just to summarize, you can think of a stock split of like buying a large pizza. You can slice that pizza up into four very large slices, or you can slice it up in eight individual slices, or maybe even 16 individual slices. Now, no matter how many times you slice it up, the size of your large pizza, it does not change. But the number of people that you can share that pizza with, based on the number of slices, that does change. So instead of being able to share four slices of pizza, you can share it with eight people if you make it eight slices, or you can share it with 16 people if you cut it up in 16 different pieces. 
And so if you have one pizza and you want to share it with more people, whether they're people that eat a lot or don't eat a lot, now you can slice that pizza up or that share of stock into two, four, eight, or 16 slices. Changing the number of slices does not increase the size of the pizza, just like changing the price per share of a company does not increase or decrease the value of that company. So now that we know the definition of a stock split and what it really means when a company does a stock split, would this really make a difference for you as far as purchasing an in individual company? And what do you think about Apple as the most valuable company in the world at this time? What do you think about them deciding to do their four to one stock split? Now that you know more information about what a stock split is, and maybe you just learned that they're actually doing a stock split. And if not Apple, are there any other companies that you would be ready to buy today if they were to do a two to one or a four to one stock split, or maybe even a 10 to one stock split? Make sure to leave your comments below. Let me know what you think about this video. Let me know what you think about stock splits and what you learned. And thanks for watching this video. If you're not a current member of the Mobile Money Nation, all you need to do is hit the subscribe button down below, hit the like button because you really like this video, and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified the next time I upload a video. Again, thanks for watching and have a great day.